Fire is one of the Earth's dominant forces. Fire shapes the ecology of Earth. And it is in the world of plants where fire transforms the Earth. Plants are the fuel for fire. Tucked inside the Florida Peninsula are fire-loving prairies, pinelands, and scrublands. You might be surprised that fire is so important in Florida where we have such heavy summer rains and high humidity. These plants are adapted to floods, fire, droughts, hurricane winds, and even frost. With all the disturbances thrown at life in Florida, none is more important than fire. When fire is suppressed, the low and open scrub that so many rare plants and animals depend upon can become a forest. It turns out that the lack of fire is a bigger disturbance than fire. For three decades, I've been studying how plants that afford a scrub respond to fire. When I was very young, I became fascinated by nature and plants. My dad took me on hikes and my grandfather, who was a professor and a botanist, would teach me plants in the fields and forests of Maine. They had great curiosity about nature. They just wanted to figure out how nature worked and that was really inspiring. But 30 years ago, my wife and our three cats and I began a, a long car trip from Indiana to South Central Florida here in the Lake Wales Ridge where I began working for Archbold Biological Station, studying plants and fire in places like this. These ancient sand dunes support an incredible number of rare plants that occur nowhere else on Earth. Besides these special plants, I was struck by the patterns in the Florida scrub. With an elevation change of just a few feet, I could walk from the open dry sand of rosemary scrub, downhill through oaks and palmettos, and into the mucky, grassy seasonal ponds. I became a giant, traversing hilly terrain in just a few steps. I'll never forget my first prescribed burn here in 1989. I followed the burn boss, Jeff Babb, of the Nature Conservancy, around like a little puppy. The fire intensity would vary from meter to meter and from minute to minute. Some burned areas were all black. In other places, the fire had been more delicate, leaving wilted leaves still attached to branches. How do plants recover from the black ash, from what looks like nothing? To understand how scrub plants survive, I listened to them over many generations. Under the sun, Three in the rain, along with scores of curious interns and outstanding research assistants. 924 Aronica is a vegetative plant with one rosette and it's 2.9. After a fire in Archibald's second largest patch of rosemary scrub in 1985, all the rosemary died. Then, after two years, just a handful of rosemary seedlings emerged from seeds stored in the soil. I became concerned. Florida rosemary is a foundation species on these high and dry patches of rosemary scrub. Losing rosemary from this area would have been a major change. I systematically followed individual rosemary plants for decades after the fire, as I do for many rare and imperiled plants here. I discovered tiny rosemary seedlings had really high survival after fire. Over 95% of them survived every year. So a few of these seedlings could become another Florida rosemary stand. Rosemary needs five to 10 years to reach flowering maturity, to produce fruits, and to replenish the seed bank. If rosemary is burned before maturity, then there will be fewer seeds to trickle down into the soil for safekeeping. I shared my findings with other land managers to help better protect the scattered rosemary stands that still remain. Florida rosemary depends on its offspring, its seeds, to keep their genes living. We call it a reseeder. Lots of plants use this strategy. Like Florida rosemary, the sand pine dies during a fire. By fire and these cones sand pine never invested in or evolved any physical fire defenses. Just look at it. 
Its evergreen branches spread out from bottom to top. Fire climbs up the short needle branches like a stepladder, burning each step as it goes. The thin bark of the sand pine offers little resistance to fire. Yet, the sand pine strategy works, thanks to these. Sand pine cones open up and drop seeds in response to heat or just old age. Fate and fortune ensure that some seeds survive. Sand pine seedlings germinate within a few months of fire, nurtured by greater sunlight, soil moisture, and nutrients from the ashes of their parent. The other pine in the Florida scrub takes a different approach. The South Florida slash pine puts up a fight and chooses not to die in the first place. Look at these long fire deflecting pine needles and shaggy layers of fire resistant bark. Notice the lack of lower limbs so fire can't climb up into the canopy. Ironically, slash pine adults can die when burned too little. Too little fire lets the understory build up into a tinderbox, fueling hotter and larger fires. None of these rare and delicate looking scrub plants can survive fire. Something else survives that is invisible to us. Seeds. Lots of them. Depositing precious seeds into the seed bank is like saving for a rainy day. Or, in this case, a burn day. Fire might kill seeds in the top layers of soil, but deeper seeds survive. We discovered that rare plants, like wedge-leaf button snake root, store seeds for years and even decades in the soil. Then, right after the fire, the population explodes with lots of seedlings. But the longer these plants go without fire, the more the populations decline. Yep. Number 119 is dead. Okay. Their soil seed banks get depleted. This boom and bust cycle creates distinct patterns for reseeder plants in response to fire. Most plants here agree that the best way to survive the burn is to go below ground. The tortoise knows that. So do all the insects, lizards, frogs, snakes, and mammals who burrow into the sand or use tortoise burrows to escape the fire. Scrub plants like oaks and palmettos store everything vital below ground in massive storage organs, roots, and rhizomes. Below ground, fire can't do much to you. Heat dies quickly on the surface of the ground, rapidly cooling in the dense sugar sand. Research at Archbold showed 80% of the palmetto is subterranean. Fire consumes the above ground vegetation, but fire does not kill these plants. Within weeks after a fire, palmettos and oaks rise again out of the black. We call them Resprouters. Resprouters use nutrients left by the fire to help produce new green shoots. In nature's big picture, this is a small setback. By burying temperature data loggers in the sand right before a fire, we can study the relationship between fire temperature and the survival and growth of the resprouters. We have found that oaks and palmettos are resilient to a range of fire frequencies and intensities. They can tolerate temperatures up to 1,000 degrees Celsius. That's hot. After fire, resprouting plants grow rapidly. And by six months or a year, they look pretty much the same as they did before the fire. So resprouters don't experience a population explosion like the reseeders. They are more or less in the same place and the same size before and after fire. Fire stimulates flowering for many resprouters, especially Palafoxia fei and palmettos. Meet Florida jointweed. 
You can find this red flowering plant with jointed stems growing in open sandy areas, but it is unlikely you will find it unless you know where to look. Because Florida jointweed is endangered and only found in two counties in central Florida. It is a challenge to study because the plants are small and they can grow very close together. But it's a very interesting plant because of how it deals with fire. We marked plants before the fire and they never survived. Despite having a taproot, this herb does not have enough gas in the tank below ground to resprout. And there is no jointweed seed bank like most rare scrub herbs because jointweed seeds do not go dormant. We still find Florida jointweed throughout the fire-loving scrub. Their secret is their traveling seeds. Florida jointweed and others like it survive fire through high viability seeds. We know these tiny seeds always germinate right after being produced. Time is of the essence. Winter winds blow their seeds into burned and other open areas. In December and January, you could find Florida jointweed seeds moving over the sand surface. For this traveler, small and patchy burns are key. These unburned patches are sources of seeds and are also refuges for species that avoid fire. Other plants seem to follow all the rules to survive fire. Stacy Smith, who has been working with me for 12 years, monitoring and studying all these plants, knows one of these rule followers all too well. Here is one of the largest populations of Crotillary avenensis that we study. Plant is way down here, this little guy right here. Plant is very diminutive. <laughs> Avon Park Harebells is distinguished by a large yellow flower with a short stem and covered in namesake white or yellowish white hairs. This deeply rooted pea occurs at only three Florida scrub sites, a few miles from each other, and is at high risk for extinction. Avon Park Harebells is a resprouter. It also stores seeds in the soil away from heat, ready for that pulse of post-fire nutrients in deposits of ash. And it grows faster and flowers more after fire. When you live in scrub with a variety of fire, this variable fire survival strategy is the ultimate bed hedging strategy. Like all plants in the scrub, there is one thing that harebales cannot survive, taking fire away. Given enough time, oaks and palmettos will overtop this tiny plant, shading it out. I've now experienced several fires every year in the Florida scrub. I am trained as a certified burner in Florida, a state that leads the nation in prescribed fire management. We've begun lighting uh, to the west and the south of the rosemary bulb. In the beginning, I saw fire as a monolithic force. I expected simple responses from the organisms that were affected. Now, I see fire in a more nuanced way, interacting with weather, hydrology, insects, disease, and many other ecological factors. We stopped lighting, there was a pretty good fire. It looks to me like it was running kind of south to north, so we need someone to check the north line. Fire shapes the Florida scrub, but also the Florida scrub shapes fire. Each influences the other. Trimming branches, stimulating seed germination, triggering flowering, and selecting for those who can survive. One can always see new and interesting things when wandering through an area that has been recently burned. Right after a fire, I look for variation in fire severity. What didn't burn? What burned extra hot? Within a few days, I look for resprouting plants. These plants survive fire and take advantage of abundant resources after fire. You see they have a lot of uh, uh, herbivory shortly after the fire. This one's resprouted even though it survived up above. Over the next few months, it's like Christmas, seeing which plants bloom and which plants sprout from seed. These plants depend on their offspring, their seeds, to keep their genes living. 
Sometimes new plants appear through dispersal of seeds into burned areas. The many different ways that plants have adapted to the power of fire is what captured my imagination every day for the last 30 years. While I spend more time in the office these days, I still relish my time in the field. Field work in subtropical Florida is challenging. The work, monotonous. Every year, plants are measured. Flowers and stems are counted. Yeah. It's fun and rewarding to figure out what scrub plants need, how they survive, and how we can translate that knowledge to effective land management and conservation. I am proud to make small contributions to keep scrub plants on the landscape long after I'm gone. <laughs>